In this uh, module, we are going to discuss the interplay of rationality with dominated strategies. Since rationality means that the player uh, always wants to maximize its own payoff, uh, it is very natural to assume that rational players do not play dominated strategies. Uh, whether it is weakly dominated or strictly dominated, uh, they will always have a better option than playing a dominated strategy. So instead what we can really do in order to find the reasonable outcomes of a game uh, is to eliminate all these dominated strategies. By elimination we mean that we, we are going to reformulate the same game as if that player did not have that strategy, the dominated strategy. Now there are certain uh, effects when you uh, eliminate certain strategies uh, because uh, there could be some other kind of uh, damage that you can potentially do to the, to the game by removing a strategy altogether. So uh, first uh, let, let us see how uh, the, uh, the dominated strategies work, uh, elimination of dominated strategies work and then we can show certain results uh, which will say what happens when you remove the strategies. So if you uh, uh, remove the strategies, uh, a very important question is in which order you should uh, remove the dominated strategies. Maybe a player may, uh, could have multiple dominated strategies or a, a all the players may have one or more dominated strategies. So in which order you should uh, eliminate that also makes a difference. Turns out that for strictly dominated strategies, the order of elimination does not matter. You can uh, see this with an example uh, or you can formally prove this, but the, but the bottom line is or the intuition is that uh, because it is strict, uh, it is always going to be strictly uh, better if you remove the uh, dominated strategy. So uh, if, you, if the, uh, all the players have only strictly dominated strategies that are removed, uh, you will always end up in the same reduced game after removing those strategies. But uh, this is not true when the dominated strategies are weak. So uh, you may end up uh, eliminating certain strategies and uh, you can end up in a, in a different game than, uh, than if you had chosen the elimination order in a different way. So let us look at an example. So uh, let's say this is a uh, this is an example where the row player has three strategies: top, middle, and bottom, and the column player has left, center, and right. And these are the numbers that that we have chosen. Now we can see that uh, uh, this strategy M for player one dominates the strategy T. You can check all these numbers here, and you can see that uh, this is a weakly dominance, uh, weakly dominated strategy. Now you can think think about uh, how you should uh, eliminate this. In fact, there are many other dominated strategies you can figure that out. So if we take this order, let's say T. So if I uh, do this uh, T elimination, that means it is it is uh, not part of the strategy of player one anymore. Then in the reduced game, I can also remove R because R is also a dominated strategy. So R is dominated by L in this case. Uh, in this reduced game, not in the original game, but in the reduced game. So you remove that one also. Then you go to B because B is now dominated by M. Uh, you can remove that as well. And finally, you remove C uh, for player 2. Now you are left with only 2, 2, that is M, L. And that is the, uh, that is the final predictable outcome if you are uh, removing the uh, dominated weekly dominated strategies in this order. Similarly, if you uh, remove these uh, strategies in a different order, let's say you remove B first because B is also dominated by M, so you remove B first, then you uh, remove L uh, which is dominated by R in the reduced game, uh, you then uh, eliminate C. Right. C is also dominated by R and then finally you remove T for player 1 and you are uh, finally coming to this R, M comma R which gives you a different utility for these two players. So uh, in, in the order in which you are eliminating uh, finally determines uh, which game you, you end up in and it, this may differ for, for the uh, weekly dominated strategies. Now, one natural question that uh, one can ask, uh, we have talked about dominated, uh, dominant strategies 
and it is quite natural that a rational player whenever there exists a dominant strategy a dominant strategy which dominates all other strategies uh, either strictly or weakly uh, should be playing that strategy right i mean the rational player always wants to maximize its payoff and if there is a dominant strategy equilibrium that means every player has a strategy uh, for which it is domin uh, it's dominant uh, which is dominant therefore that uh, strategy profile is the most predictable outcome for this game so is every game uh, guaranteed to have a dominant strategy or a dominant strategy equilibrium the answer is actually no uh, so let us look at two examples so uh, the left one is called the coordination game imagine that the uh, there are two drivers who are driving uh, uh, on two opposite sides of the road they are coming uh, towards each other now both of them can drive on the left or both of them can drive on the light, right in which case they can pass without colliding to each other uh, but if one of them chooses to drive on the left the other guy chooses to uh, drive on the right then they will come in front of each other and they can't move so so the payoff essentially indicates that whenever you, both of them coordinate, they get some positive payoff. But when they are not coordinating with each other, they get zero payoff. So if, you, I, if I ask you, uh, what is the dominant strategy for player one in this case? You see that when uh, the other player, player two is playing L, it is the best response for player one also to play L. But when uh, it is choosing R, it is the best response for player to, to choose R as well. So there does not exist one single strategy which is, uh, uh, which is better than the other strategy irrespective of what the other player is playing. Similarly, if you look at this football or cricket game, let's say uh, you and your friend are uh, willing to watch a uh, cricket match together. Uh, well, in the uh, social distancing uh, times, we cannot watch together. So let's say uh, we are actually uh, playing an online game and uh, you and your friend if you are playing against each other you get the maximum payoff so suppose uh, player one that is you like football more than cricket therefore if both of you are playing uh, the, uh, the online game of uh, football uh, against each other then you get some extra payoff and the other guy uh, your friend gets a little less payoff uh, the, the symmetrically opposite thing happens if you both play cricket but if you are playing football and your uh, uh, friend is playing cricket, then you don't get any uh, payoff. You only like to play against each other. So that gives you a zero zero payoff. So similar questions can be asked here. So does it have any uh, dominant strategy? The answer is no, because uh, you again see that there is a kind of a coordination that you need. If uh, your friend is choosing F, you should also choose F. If your friend is choosing C, you are also choosing C. So there does not exist any strategy which is strictly or weakly dominating the other strategy. So uh, what do we do in this case? So we still have some kind of a predictable guarantee. Uh, clearly dominant domination or uh, dominant strategy equilibrium won't be able to guarantee uh, any predictable outcome in this case. So in that uh, situation, uh, when dominance cannot explain this reasonable outcome, we, uh, uh, what we do is uh, the refine the equilibrium concept. So we make the equilibrium, equilibrium concept a little less strict, that is what refinement means, uh, so that we can actually capture a predictable outcome even in these games like coordination game or football or cricket game. So this brings us to the concept of Nash equilibrium, one of the most famous ideas of game theory. Uh, so it was invented by John Nash in 1951. So the, the, uh, the whole idea of Nash equilibrium can be captured in, in the following catch line that no player gains by unilateral deviation in a Nash equilibrium. So let's put it uh, in formal terms. So we are going to consider a strategy profile, let's say SI star, S minus I star, which means S1 star, S2 star, up to SN star. This is called a pure strategy Nash equilibrium or PSNE for, for short. If for all players, and for all strategies SI of player I, the following happens. So what does it mean? That if you are, if both the players are choosing the same, uh, that strategy profile, the strategy profile which is called the PSNE, and uh, the player I is unilaterally deviating to SI, 
and uh, the other players are still holding on to SI, S minus I star. In that case, your payoff is never going to get better off. Right? So let's come back to the football or cricket game to illustrate this point. So uh, let's consider this to be the S1 uh, star. So S1 star and S2 star. Uh, in this case, S1 star is equal to F. S2 star is also F. Now, if player 2 holds on to the, the strategy S2 star, which is F, then player 1 has no reason to deviate from F to C because that is only going to give him uh, less payoff. The similar thing is true for player 2. So if player 1 uh, sticks to the strategy F, then player 1, if he, if he moves from F to C, then he gets 0 instead of 1. So therefore, he also does not have any reason of uh, unilaterally deviating. So that is, uh, so we will call this uh, strategy profile F, F as a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Now look at this game and tell me if there exists another uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Maybe you can pause, think for a while and then uh, get to the answer. The answer is yes. Uh, in fact, C, C is also a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. So you can use the same argument if uh, player 2 is uh, sticking to C then player 1 does not have any reason to move from C to F and similarly for, uh, for the other player as well. So we are going to look at the Nash equilibrium concept with a different viewpoint. So this is called the best response view. So what, how do we define a best response of a player? The best response of a player I against the strategy profile S minus I of the other players is a strategy that gives the maximum utility. So uh, let us look at uh, the expression uh, from, uh, from, uh, from player I's point of view. So we are calling this as the best response set for player I when other players are playing S minus I. So what is it? These are collection of all those strategies. Of course, there could be only one strategy, but uh, this is a more general definition. There could be more than one. So such that whenever you are taking the utility of SI and the other players who are, uh, who are holding on to their strategies S minus I, then this utility uh, uh, for playing SI will be weakly better than all the other strategies of that player, of that player I. Right? So then we will call that uh, if other players are playing S minus I, then the best response of player I is to play uh, some strategies from this set. Now PSNE can be actually rephrased in this best response view, uh, where we will call that PSNE is a strategy profile SI star and S minus I star such that this SI star is belonging to the best response set of agent I when all the other players are playing S minus I star and this should hold for all agents. So if you uh, uh, just think through it, you will see that this is essentially just rephrasing uh, the previous definition of uh, your strategy Nash equilibrium. So to give you a kind of a feeling what uh, uh, PSNE means, PSNE essentially gives you a stability. It, uh, it says that uh, once uh, you are there, it is not telling you how you, you should go there, but suppose you, you somehow magically uh, go in the S, SI star, S minus I star state, then no rational player has any reason of unilaterally deviating from that uh, position. So this is some sort of a uh, self-enforcing uh, agreement among all the players, so we can also uh, consider that to be a reasonable outcome of this game. Uh, it's an equilibrium point. Now I would leave with a question and which uh, I think you should uh, think about before going into the answer. So the, uh, the question is what is the relationship between the strongly strictly dominant strategy equilibrium, weakly dominant strategy equilibrium and pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Uh, is there a kind of a, a containment uh, relationship which implies which one. Let me also give you the answer. So the stri strictly dominant strategy equilibrium is the strongest. So you can clearly see that SDAC, if it exists, that automatically implies that that is the uh, weakly dominant strategy equilibrium. You can check uh, whether those inequalities are satisfied or not. And if there exists a weakly dominant strategy equilibrium, that also implies that that is the PSNE. So PSNE is, uh, is the uh, weakest among all these uh, equilibrium concepts. So if you want to draw a diagram uh, with the games 
So uh, let's say all the games which has an SDAC, that games automatically will also have a WDAC. So all the games uh, that has a WDAC uh, automatically contains all the games that has WDAC and all the games that has PSNE uh, that automatically contains uh, all the previous two classes. So, so you can see that uh, as you make, as you relax your equilibrium concepts, you get a larger class of games and that is one of the reasons we can now capture or give predictable guarantees in more number of games.